44 upgrade. So today I'm installing STRC's front and rear green aluminum adjustable shock bodies. I decided to go ahead and choose a different route instead of just getting more big bore shocks or even Proline. So let's go ahead and open these up and check them out. All right, as you can see, each thing is individually wrapped, which STRC is known for. Go ahead and cut them open and you can see these look really, really good. And the bottoms of the shocks do screw off. And as you can see, it's a very snug fit for the rings. And I didn't realize it at first, but there is rubber O-rings in there, so it holds its position once you adjust it to the size you want. It's actually a little tricky to get these rings on the shock bodies, but once they're on there, it's a nice fit. Well, let's go ahead and get these installed. So in order to install the new shock bodies, we need to go ahead and disassemble the front and rear shocks. First, I need to get them out. Each one is held in with a screw, one on top and one on bottom. Now that I took off all the shocks, I need to go ahead and start taking them apart. So first, I'm gonna go ahead and collapse the spring and pull out the shock guard brace. After that, slide off the spring, set that off to the side, and do the next. Now I'm gonna go ahead and pull off the top shock spring brace. Once I take all those off, I need to go ahead and remove the shock cap itself. I'm just gonna use a hex screwdriver, hold the shock body, and twist. Now I need to go ahead and drain each one of these shocks. Now that all the shocks have been drained, I need to go ahead and take off the end rod. So I'm going to get some foam. If you don't have any foam, you can just use some paper towels. Get some pliers. I'm going to grip it, hold it down, and twist off the rod. I'm going to set that off to the side. Then I'm going to go ahead and unscrew this bottom. I'm going to pull that off, set that to the side, and finally I'm going to get the shock shaft and I'm going to slide it right on out. But I'm not done because I need to go ahead and get the rubber spacers out of the end of the body. As for all of these, I'm going to go ahead and wash them in some soap and warm water and they should turn out fine. So when it comes to disassembling the front and rear shocks, there is no difference other than the size, except for this one small thing. For the shock shafts in the rear, there is a small little black spacer that goes in between the top and the bottom. And if you don't pull it out when you pull out the shock, it's going to be stuck in the bottom of the body. Believe me, that thing's a pain to pull out of there. It's actually a really good thing that I'm doing this now because you can tell that the oil from inside of these shocks was really, really dirty. Well, there's the old bodies. I can go ahead and just throw these away because I don't need them anymore. So I checked over all the seals and they all still look like they're in really good shape. So I can go ahead and reuse these. If they were all tattered up, I would have to replace them before installing them into the new shock bodies. Now that everything's been clean and sorted, I can now reassemble the shocks. I'm gonna start off with the rear. I'm gonna get the shock shaft itself, make sure for the back, it's gonna have that small little spacer. Slide that through, and it's a pretty good fit. Not gonna lie, that's pretty nice. Next up, I'm gonna get a small rubber seal, slide that down, followed by a plastic seal, and then we got the other rubber seal. After that, I'm gonna go ahead and get some Loctite and put just a dab on this part. That way, the aluminum cap is gonna hold on to the shock body. I'm gonna screw that all the way down and then I'm gonna pinch the shaft for the shock and reattach the end rod. 
Now I need to go ahead and do that with the other three shocks. Next up, I need to fill the shocks with oil. And instead of using the Traxxas brand, I chose Low C 35 weight. Traxxas brand usually is around 30. I wanted a little bit heavier, thicker oil. So in order to fill these, I'm gonna fill these up about three fourths of the way. Then I'm gonna pump the piston to get all the bubbles out. Once that's taken care of, I'm going to fill up the shock all the way to the top with oil. So now that it's been about 20 minutes or so, all the bubbles have come to the surface and popped. That is a good thing. We do not want any air inside this oil. So now I can finally attach the shock cap. Since there is a rubber bladder in the top, I don't have to put any thread locker on there because the rubber bladder is going to keep enough friction with the two parts that it's not going to come undone. I'm just going to line everything up and screw it on. Once it's all the way down, I'm just going to give it a slight little nudge and I don't want to do anything more than that, otherwise it can destroy the bladder. With a few pumps, I can tell that everything is perfectly fine. So now, I'm going to get the adjustable ring and screw it and screw it five minutes later <sighs> screw it all the way to the top now I can finally get the shock spring slide that on push it up put on the shock guard and I am finally done now since these are energy shock springs, you can see that they're a little bit tighter than the stock ones, but if I want to push them all the way down, all I have to do is find the beginning of the wire, then my nail in there and rotate it and push it down. Just like that. One done and three more to go. Now I can finally reattach the shocks. The shock guards were looking a bit boring to me, so I decided to throw some RPM stickers on there. I think they look pretty good. If you don't think so, let me know. I might just pull them off. Not too sure yet. Let's get these on first. All I have to do is slide the shock into position and reattach the screw on the bottom as well as the top. Here's before. And here, of course, is after and honestly I have to say they look pretty darn good there is one small thing I should probably mention though the shock bodies in the front are actually pretty close in color to the shock caps but the ones in the back have a darker tint to it they match the springs more than they do with the shock caps well the funny thing about this RC is that there is different colored green aluminum parts all throughout it so <laughs> I guess I can't complain all too much. So before I end this video, I have to give a huge shout out to everyone who's donated to me on Patreon. Because of you guys, these upgrades are possible. And that was a level 44 upgrade for Creature.